Hello and welcome to today's Movers and Shakers virtual event. My name is Lena Tasha Salter and I'm Managing Director of Movers and Shakers. I hope you're all having a really great week so far. And I know that we've got uh, many of our members on today's events and many friends of Movers and Shakers. Welcome to you all. Um, just for those who might not know us, um, we are the UK's leading property networking forum. And we're in our 25th year this year, bringing together key players across the property marketplace and putting on great events. We've been enjoying our virtual events since April. And just to let you know, if you've missed any of these at all, they've all been uploaded now to our YouTube channel. So do take a look, do watch them, enjoy, and please do subscribe. So today we've got something a bit different for you. We have a 45 minute holistic session. We're calling it Midweek Refresh. And the idea is for you all to focus on your well-being, to de-stress and to learn. And we're really looking forward to welcoming Nikki Perry, who is the founder of Blessed Yoga. She is in fact a yoga teacher to act actress Kate Winslet. So yes, claim to fame there. Absolutely lovely lady who is full of so much information on increasing our overall vitality and giving us all lots of tips, tips for things that we can do at home and also at work. So she's gonna break down this 45 minute session. First of all, to talk about stress, the science behind stress and the response, to talk about nutritional balance, and then of course, the yoga. And this is all seated yoga, active yoga, yoga for stress release. And then she's gonna be talking about our breathing techniques and doing a meditation for us, which will be lovely. So Nikki has also been working with lots of corporates recently um, across the UK, delivering a well-being classes and yoga classes to uh, employees working at home across the UK. So she's doing a tremendous job. So please do enjoy today's session. I'm gonna hand you over to Nikki. There is obviously the chance for you to ask questions on the Q&A tab on Zoom. Um, we possibly won't have time for that. And if we don't, and you do have any burning questions, I'll ask Nikki to answer them afterwards and we'll get the responses out on Twitter and things. So I'm gonna leave you to enjoy this next 45 minutes and speak to you afterwards. Thank you, Nikki, over to you. Welcome, happy Wednesday. It's the most beautiful day. You are now being transported into the cow shed. This is my yoga studio. Um, I'll show you around. These are the beautiful windows looking over the decking. We do a lot of yoga outside because we're blessed literally with this beautiful weather. And then this is inside the studio, normally heaving, very vibrant community. Obviously with lockdown, um, things have changed. And now we are online, which is absolutely amazing. Having taught yoga for 23 years, I've done two DVDs, um, and all sorts of other things. This is definitely the most exciting, being able to teach people all over the world. Every single day, I have a team of 15 teachers that I've trained over the years, and they all teach here and now from home via Zoom. And we are loving it. We're loving it because yoga is at the very center of what we do. But through yoga, there's eight limbs. You may or may not be familiar with the practice of yoga, but it is really in every part of your life. It's not just what you physically do on the mat, it's what you do off the mat and your practice, which is the yoga that you do on the mat, is this regular discipline. This regular discipline gives you a vitality of movement in the body, the blood flow, the breath, which then translates into your everyday life. So it helps you deal with perhaps stressful situations more easily. It enables you to focus and spend a little bit more time on perhaps what you're thinking about eating for your breakfast, lunch and supper and making those meal choices all that much more um, nourishing and nutritious for your gut, which we'll come on to. And then all that ultimately then leads to a better night's sleep. So it's very simple. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is movement of your body, eating your nourishment of your body and sleep three really crucial things when you do those three right everything literally everything falls into place any issues you may have in your life just start to disappear it's quite extraordinary um you you don't believe it until you do it and then when you do the practice and you stick to the practice 
all these layers of discovery just start happening as the years go, go by. It is a journey of discovery. People say to me the whole time, Nikki, how can you still be teaching 23 years later? Do you not get bored of teaching a similar sort of thing? And, it, and the answer is absolutely no way. I'm still learning every single day. I love watching, see, watching people transform on their journey and they may come with backache or mild depression or not able to sleep at night or really bad irritable bowel syndrome or whatever the symptom is. Yoga is extraordinary uh, over time reducing these symptoms and um, I urge you to try it it's it is truly incredible if you haven't already so I'm going to talk to you initially about yoga Ayurveda if those of you who are not aware of Ayurveda it's the science of life it's um, similar to yoga it's a sister to yoga it's been going for 5,000 years and it really is a way of educating us to make sure that we live optimally and I can say this because I've seen thousands of students here in the studio through my trainings, through retreats, through all sorts of various things that I've done over time, literally heal, heal properly from the inside out. And that's through the combination of Ayurvedic medicine and the practice and discipline of yoga. Now, Ayurvedic medicine is a huge topic. I am still learning. I'll get to 110 and I'll still be learning. There's no way you can ever know everything about it, but we'll touch on that today. I'm also going to talk to you about how you can look after your immune system, because I think right now we need that more than ever. Um, so just a few top tips there, which um, I'm looking forward to sharing with you. And then obviously the importance of rhythm and routine in your life. That's crucial. The practice of yoga, the practice of your breath and meditation. There's so much I could talk to you about, but I'm just going to touch on these topics, which hopefully will give you um, a little awareness and an opening into the most beautiful practice, which I adore and I love to share. So we'll start with your breath, because that is the most crucial thing. I'd love you just to sit up nice and tall where you are. I want you to feel your seat bones pressing down into your chair. If you're in a chair, if you're sitting on the floor cross-legged, then obviously that's going to make me really happy, but I can't see you. But if you are, then namaste. Um, so sit up nice and tall, feel the shoulders relax and just feel the crown of your head start to lengthen towards the ceiling or if you're outside to the sky. And then drop those shoulders down and perhaps just do a few circles with the shoulders. Maybe you've been sitting at your desk all morning. Maybe you've been typing, maybe you've been driving and tension just builds. Even if we don't want it to, you can't help it. It just does. So just roll those shoulders and then just rest your hands on your chair beside you. And now close your eyes. I want you to breathe in and out through your mouth. Now breathe in, long inhalation through your nose. And a long sigh out of your mouth. Now I want you to imagine that you are drawing a square. You're going to breathe in and go up the left side of the square. You're going to breathe out and go along the top of the square. You're going to breathe in, coming down the right side of the square. And you're going to breathe out, drawing along the bottom of the square. And so you keep going. Inhale up the left. Exhale along the top. Inhale down the right. Exhale along the bottom. And this rhythm of breath, just focusing on breath, is going to calm your entire nervous system and lower your blood pressure. Just focusing on breath is everything. It really is the master key to a calm, measured, centered life. And that is it. You just need to breathe and focus on it. You breathe 22,000 times a day. Most of them you're not aware of, but when you are aware of them, when you connect deeply to it, you can use the power of your breath to literally open up your body. Where you feel any tension or stagnation, it will soften the tension in the muscles and the joints. So now I just want you to interlace your fingers and reach the palms up to the sky. Look up and stretch the side of your body, your intercostal muscles, which go up and down your rib cage, which is why stretching in the morning is so good. Then reach your arms really wide, stretching through your fingers and take your arms behind you. Maybe the back of your chair is there. So you don't have to interlace your fingers and having them long. You could just take elbow to elbow behind your back if that's all that is accessible. And now draw the fist away from you. Draw the chin to the chest and feel a lengthening in the back of your neck. 
so good. These are very simple chair yoga poses. I wanted to do them right at the beginning just to get you relaxed, centered and focused. Roll your shoulders again. Place your left hand on your right knee, right hand at the base of your spine. Now I want you to inhale and lengthen through the crown of your head. And as you exhale, you'll exhale you're gonna gently rotate. So you're drawing the right rib cage back and the left rib cage forward. And now your gaze is gonna track over your right shoulder. So you're gonna gently start to look behind you, but no forcing or pushing. Do this gently. And then slowly you come back to center. You're gonna take your right hand, place it on the outside of the left knee, left hand at the base of your spine. Inhale, lengthen through the crown of your head. As you exhale, I want you to gently turn to your left. So feel the left lung coming back, right lung traveling forward. Gaze now going over the left shoulder. And you feel this lengthening and rotation. Just feels really nice. And then gently come back to center. Just know that you can do these very simple poses at any point during your day. Press your feet now really into the earth. Where all four corners of your feet. Feel the inner arches lifting up. Really centering yourself, knees stacking over ankles, shoulders over hips, and you're just sitting in beautiful alignment. Your tummy muscles are drawing in and up, and your spine is being strengthened just by sitting. And your breath is this lovely, natural flow. So you probably, hopefully now, feel quite calm, quite relaxed, more awake, perhaps a little bit more alert. This is the practice of yoga. It's no more challenging than what you're doing right now. You are here. So keep breathing deeply, notice the breath moving in and out. And I'm gonna email you afterwards, or Lee will email you a little pack that I've put together of various breathing techniques and all the top tips I'm sharing. So if you want to take notes, you can, but otherwise I will give you all the information. So you've got that at home. But um, Ayurveda, the science of life, has so many elements to it, but one element that I absolutely love and think is fundamental to thriving in life, which is what this hopefully is going to leave you with these top tips, um, is dinachara. Dinachara means daily routine. So the habits in which you rise, the time that you rise, when you eat your breakfast, when you move your body, when you have your lunch and when you have your dinner. It's all linked to nature. It's a beautiful thing. And I will share this with you. It's um, something called clock genes, and we'll come on to that shortly. Prior to that, I want to touch on stress. So your stress response, we all get stressed. It's a natural reaction. It happens like this all day long. How we choose to react to that situation um, is up to us. We have what's called a little stress response time. We have a moment before the blood pressure starts to rise. You can feel your heart perhaps accelerating in a stressful situation. Your hands can sweat. You can start sweating and you feel like you just want to blow the bloody doors off. That happens, it's very normal. There's various levels of stress. It can be a very short, sweet, spontaneous stress, or it can be something which is chronic stress, which is when you live sort of in your adrenal gland constantly in this high stressful situation. And that is what we want to never be in. We, we have stress, it's a very natural thing, like I am in a stressful situation right now, giving you this presentation, but it's a good stress, it's firing up my adrenal gland, it's releasing this hormone, endorphins, so I feel really good and I'm awake and I'm alert, I'm ready, I'm in my fight and flight, sympathetic nervous system, which I'm sure you've heard about, but we want to be more in our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and our relaxation state. That's where we want to be most of the time. That's what the practice of yoga gives you. That's what the practice of breath gives you. And that awareness of your breath is what I'd love to share with you today. So when you feel all these symptoms rising in your body when you are feeling stressed, at any point, you have a moment in which you can choose how you react. And a way in which it can help you to choose is by dialing into your breath. Literally, just before you're about to react, you can pause, and if you can count in your head for 20 seconds, that reaction time will pass. And rather than reacting in a way perhaps you weren't gonna be very happy with afterwards, you're gonna respond in a more measured way. So this is called, I like to phrase it, mind the gap. You have this gap of time that's yours to harness. You know, what's hap you know what happens. I've, I've got a little um, diagram here, which I will share with you 
but you you know you know your 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 breath when it when it accelerates and you're sweating you're churning your glycogen into glucose your blood pressure is going through the roof you can actually get tunnel vision as well um, and also the other thing another side effects of a lot of stress is a sluggish digestive system so if you notice that's something that you have yoga can help you enormously in really awakening your digestive system helping you to release relieve your body and mind from stress and that shifts everything. When you've got a good gut, everything is great. Um, so that's your stress response. Hopefully you'll remember the mind, the gap, that's so important. But there's three things that you can take control of to really ensure that your internal organs are, are thriving. There's toxin clearance, that's number one. There's your digestive system and then your immune system. So when you start to really take control of these three, you'll be super impressed about what happens in your body. So first of all, just looking at your immune system. Okay, so really making sure, particularly now we've got second waves of corona popping up all over Europe and now we can't go on holiday anywhere to Spain, etc. cetera. Um, see what's coming next. We wanna make sure that our immune system is absolutely tip top. Tip -top. And there's three things that you can do. So, so your immune system, toxic clearance, your gut is everything. So 70% 70, 70 of your immunity comes from your gut. So everything you eat, everything you put into your gut, 70% is determining how strong or how weak your immune system is. So it's key that it's in tip-top condition. Now, your digestive system, that needs to be really efficient. It will only be efficient if you're eating really well. So you want to make sure that you're eating. Obviously, you'll have heard this before. Eat a rainbow. Eat as much variety as you can. But I just don't think we can remind ourselves enough. It's so easy to sort of be really good for a week, maybe two or even a day, and then go, actually, can't be bothered. I'm just going to flip back to some nice white toast. But um, it's so important. I want you to put the number 30 in your head, and that's 30 different fruits, vegetables, spices, herbs, variety that literally the 30 can be a grinding of black pepper counts as one garlic counts as two a pinch of himalayan rock salt counts as three turmeric is four and apple is five you've got your salad you can chuck so many things when the weather is as beautiful as this it's easy 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 to make yourself a salad with as many different colors in it as possible and that's how you need to think the more color the more variety, the healthier your gut will be. So that's a really big one. That's your digestive system. Okay, so a robust, healthy digestive system is one of the pillars to optimal health. So really keep that in mind. And variety is, is it. That's what you want. It will just help you extract more vitamins and minerals from the food you eat, and that will boost your immune system. So there we go. And you've got this triangulation with the immunity. And that's, the, that's what you're trying to get, the toxin clearance, the digestive system. And that will then give you the immunity that you need, especially during this time. So important. Okay, now I want to give you three top tips as things that you can have right now to boost your immune system. So astragalus here is this incredible herb. It's, I just swear by it. It is amazing. It's an Ayurvedic herb. It's a herb, herb, herbal medicine from the East, and it's proven to be an immune stimulant. Now, it's never been tested on COVID, but it has been tested on multiple other viruses, and they've been proven successfully to really prevent any virus developing in your system. It's very easy to take. It will be tested against COVID in time, like everything, um, but it's so effective. So if you want to boost your immune system right now, I highly recommend that. The other thing is garlic. Um, some of you will love it, some of you will hate it, but I want you to, to like take a garlic pill that you're gonna create yourself. Get a clove, a clove of garlic, chop it up so it's about the same size as a Nurofen tablet, and you're gonna swallow that before um, a meal. So probably your dinner, it depends how um, many people you're seeing at the moment, um, as to whether or not you want your breath to stink and keep the vampires at bay. But garlic is the most powerful immune boosting food in the world. It is number one, garlic, garlic, garlic. So if you can take garlic, please take it. It is phenomenal. It is a cardiovascular tonic. It prevents heart disease and in its capacity has very strong antiviral properties. Tip number three. So you've got your, 
your hego, your astragalus here, you've got your garlic, but tip number three, no surprises, is sleep, beautiful sleep. So get enough sleep. And I'm gonna come on to that now um, because it's so important. It is everything, in fact. Um, before I just talk about sleep, though, before I forget, is this power tonic. And I'm gonna send you the recipe for this power tonic. Um, you may not be into drinking herbal drinks and a cup of builder's tea is absolutely brilliant and delicious. I love it too. But every now and again, if you're feeling you want your immune system to have a little bit of a buzz, it's so simple. It's called the flask method. You literally get yourself a flask. You get your pestle and mortar. And I'm going to tell you what you put in your pestle and mortar. You're going to have two to three cardamom pods, two to three cloves, two to three black peppercorns, an inch of ginger, cinnamon stick. And you're going to bash it all up in your pestle and mortar till it creates a powder. Put it in your flask. Pour hot water on top. Add some honey to taste if you like and sip, 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 sip all day long. Do not stop sipping. And it is so powerful. It's a powerful way to, to boost your health. So the herbs and the digestion stimulants, these are really good to clear toxins from your gut, which is why I love this tonic. It literally shifts everything. It helps everything to move much more efficiently inside your body. It's a time-tested Ayurvedic approach and it really, so that's been done for over 5,000 years. What was happening in the East all that time ago from the sub-Indian continent is now being proven time and time again over here. And it really is not rocket science. It's so simple and I highly recommend it. In fact, I can't recommend it enough. And it will keep you hydrated all day long as well. And it gives your immune system a proper punch. So definitely worth doing. Now, moving on to my favorite topic of all, your clock genes. So this is the most fantastic piece of research which has recently won the Nobel Peace Prize in, for medicine in 2018. So that is the highest accolade of all medicine prizes you can ever possibly get. It's just this incredible piece of research which is focusing on the routine and rhythm of your 24 hour cycle. It's so basic, but it's just wonderful that it's now been um, proven. So your daytime clock genes do completely different things to your nighttime clock genes. No surprises. They are a new discovery. They explain our circadian rhythm. And the more specifically, our daytime clock genes and our nighttime, nighttime clock genes have very different benefits. But if you miss them, if you do not do these, what I'm about to explain to you, then that is when everything starts working very inefficiently. So, for example, if you rise at sort of 5.30, 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning, you have a natural cortisol spike. That is when it naturally, you've got one a day, one spike a day. That's when your adrenaline naturally rises and you have the most energy naturally in the morning, even if you might not feel like it at the moment, but that's just because you're not in the routine of it. But when you are, you have this natural spike. So that is the stimulus. That is like saying, good morning, sun. The sun is up. It's giving you lots of energy. It's time to wake up. This surge of cortisol will literally wake you up. It helps you control the blood sugar in your body. It stimulates your immune, immune response and it optimizes your digestive system at this time of the day. And it will help you therefore extract more nutrients from the food that you're eating. And it will regulate your heart and your blood pressure. So all these things need to, need to happen. They have to happen to ensure that our body is being optimized and working efficiently first thing in the morning. So it's super important that we get this right. So that's your morning when you first rise. Once you move into the evening, obviously your cortisol level is absolutely dropping off, but your melatonin level is coming up. So cortisol drops to virtually nothing. Melatonin rises. This is your sleep hormone. So this starts increasing. This tells the nighttime clock gene when the, when the melatonin goes up, it tells your nighttime clock genes inside your body to start stimulating the cleaning up process of the body. So all of your lymphatic excretions, it cleans your brain from toxins, it repairs your muscles, it repairs damage, all of the rejuvenating and regenerating essentials that happen during the night are mobilized by the clock genes kicking in at night. So, but the key thing, and this is what we want to avoid, is chrono disruption. 
And this is where our clock genes get messed about because of our lifestyle. This is when we sleep in until 8.30, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. We've all done it on a Sunday morning. You sleep in, you think, I'm going to have a lie and it's going to be amazing. And you actually end up feeling a little bit sluggish and a bit rubbish all day. Whereas sometimes during the week when you're sort of rising at the same time regularly, you have more energy. And well, this is why. This is why you do. So when you rise, your immune system is going to be um, really starting to work at capacity, at digestive capacity. It's going to be really vital, which is what you want. You want everything to be working properly. When you have chrono disruption, everything is impaired. Your immune system, your digestion, it will lower your energy level. You'll have no oomph, no general get up and go. You're much more susceptible to infections. Therefore, you're much more at risk to things like diabetes and blood sugar rising, which is a catalyst for so many different variables and different types of disease. So really what I want, we to, want us all to do, because it's such a, an obvious thing and it's just such a natural thing, and now it's all been proven, people sort of are now believing it and realizing it ain't no rocket science. You just rise at the right time. When you rise, you're then going to eat at the right time and move. So if you can rise at 6 a.m. and then do a yoga practice, which is why we teach so many morning practices, that is the best time to move your body because your cortisol levels at its highest. Then when you finish moving, you're then going to sit down and have a lovely breakfast before 8.30 and then a lovely pause before you next eat between 12.30 and 2 o'clock. That's your lunchtime gap. And you can keep moving as often as you can throughout the day, sipping your power tonic and drinking lots of water. And then you're coming into the evening. So that's when you want your digestive system to slow down. Well, it's, you want it to keep going, but that's when you need to slow down. So you're going to eat between 6, 7.30 at night, perhaps a little bit earlier than we used to. It's very easy in the summer to eat later and later. But then you're just putting loads of food into your gut, making yourself feel really heavy. And then it's much harder sometimes to sleep. So it's recommended that you, that you eat then. And then you sort of get into bed about 10, 10, 30, lights out by 11. That will ensure you have this wonderful, magical eight hours of sleep. And that's the magic number. That's what we're working towards. And that's what will really help keep these clock genes absolutely tick, tick top and tick tocking all at the right time. That's what we're working through. And you'll notice how any stress that you may have previously been experiencing you'll handle it so much better because you're just calmer. You're operating from a lovely place of routine and rhythm, which is what this is all about. You're eating at the right time, you're moving at the right time, and you're sleeping at the right time. And it's not difficult. And we just try and do it as often as we can. And if we can't do it seven days a week, at least we try and do it you know, four or five times a week. And then it becomes a habit. And that's where you notice the benefits of the yoga practice because when you start practicing so regularly, that's when you want to do these things. It, it's like the first stage, if you like, it creates the trigger. So if you're moving your body through your practice, you're like, oh my God, I don't now, now want to fill it with rubbish food. I want to fill it with goodness. I want to eat very mindfully. I want to be aware of every mouthful. And then I just really, I can't wait to go to sleep because I've moved my body so well. I've energized myself during the day, but now my body is tired. I'm not exhausted. I'm not drained. I've not got adrenal fatigue. I'm just naturally tired and I'm ready to have a calm, restful sleep. So the yoga practice, the practice of yoga, my goodness, the benefits are endless. You will get a healthy spine if you've never tried it. The amount of people I've taught that we're going to have spinal surgery that no longer did um, is, in, is endless. It's endless. It happens all the time. So if you have any back pain at all, I urge you to try it um, with great teachers. You really be careful, but you will be amazed. Just the movement of the body. Your spine is meant to be flexible. It's meant to move a lot. Um, it's made up of 24 little vertebrae all stacked on top of one another. And the more that we can move it and keep the suppleness in the spine, that is what gives us youth. And so often we hear people saying, oh, I'm, I'm too old now to carry on playing golf or um, I'm giving up that, I've given up sailing. And that's exactly wrong. You're never too old to do those things. It's not that you're too old. It's just that you've decided that you're too old to carry on doing them, but carry on doing them. The practice of yoga will help you to carry on doing all the things you love. Um, oh, I hope you're still there. My screen's just gone funny, but I think you are. Um, and then um, you hopefully will get more, you know, uh, more energy because that's the next thing. You'll have more focus, more cognitive focus. That just comes itself by you just being alert and, and awake. 
Then weight loss, that's just a natural thing that will just happen without you having to do anything. It will just help you to, to burn more calories. It will, um, you, you can't help it. The practice of yoga just sheds weight. So if that's something that you're after, that will just happen. You will sleep better, as I've explained. Your bones are going to get stronger just because you're weight bearing in such a great way. This lovely balancing on your legs, your arms, but in a way you won't believe if you've never tried it. It's fabulous. And therefore you're going to get better balance. When you've got better balance, you're not less likely to fall over, which when we get older is much more likely to happen. And it's not going to happen overnight. It is a practice. You just keep on going and you get better at it. It also gives you relief from back and neck pain. So lots of people get neck pain. It gives you lovely relief from that. Healthy knees, a strong heart. Gosh, your digestive system, but all the twists and the rinses, even just that lovely chair twist we did at the beginning, that really helps get your gut all rinsing and everything moving through it. Helps ease depression. We've got this nerve, a vagus nerve, which runs from the top of your head all the way down into your gut, which is why your brain is linked to your gut, which is why you know when you get butterflies, you might get a slightly upset stomach. It's all linked, which is why it's so important what you eat. But when you do back bends and you open up, you're massaging this vagus nerve. This is toning and rebalancing this very important long nerve that runs all the way through your body. And that literally releases endorphins, your happy hormone. It's like taking a happy pill when you do a back bend. It's just extraordinary. So that's definitely worth giving it a go. Um, and also you'll just feel relaxed. It will release you from any anxiety. The list goes on. In fact, the list of benefits, I think are at least 59 proven benefits. So I can't touch on them all today, but you'll be amazed at how how many benefits there are. And, and when you practice, it's like peeling layers of an onion off. You're like, oh my goodness, I can now sleep better. No way. I used to get this terrible pain in my knee and it's just gone. I used to have this achy twinge in my spine and that's gone. And it's, it is extraordinary. Headaches, if you're somebody that suffers from that, that just passes with time. It's this daily rhythm, this daily movement, this regular practice of eating well, sleeping well and moving constant movement movement so we've done one breathing technique at the beginning where you're drawing your square inhaling along exhaling across the top inhaling down and exhaling along the bottom come back to that often remember that breathing technique remember the stress response of giving you those 20 seconds where you're just going to count and breathe and pause before you react that will be so helpful but the bottom line is, is you can't beat breathing. So breathing is just the best defense against any stress, any frustration, any external angst. This is it. Your breath is everything. And once you learn the art of breathing, exhaling, and inhaling, you're likely to start to feel better in every way. You'll develop more resilience and therefore more grace. So it's just a wonderful thing to keep breathing. Another top tip is you can put your hands on your belly now. Take a big breath in and feel your belly expand. Feel your ribs expand. Feel your chest lift. And then you're going to breathe out through your mouth slowly. Feeling the belly soften and the ribs soften. So do this again. Hands on belly. Big breath in. Feel the belly expanding. Ribs expanding. Chest lifting. And then exhale, feel everything softening. And because you've got your hands on your stomach, you can really help to tap into the breath. So stay and breathing, expanding, lifting, lengthening, oxygenating your blood, oxygenating your muscles, therefore, helping you to feel more alive, more active, more energized. It all comes through your breath. So feel it passing through you. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is do a little meditation with you. I think um, with you just sitting so still and breathing, I, if you're up for it, I'd like you to just close your eyes. So meditation, well, people go, oh, I can't meditate. I've never meditated in my life. And really, all it is, is being still. And then if you say, well, I can't meditate because when I'm sitting still, I notice my brain starts to wander off. That is it. You are there. It's that absolute awareness of your brain, noticing that you are focused on your breath and then suddenly you're in Sainsbury's or wherever. The fact that you can then bring yourself back to the breath is the art of meditation. That is it. There's nothing more to it than that. It's bringing you into the present, bringing you into this moment right now. So I'm going to talk you through a little meditation, very simple one. 
And the, the way to really access it and make the most of it is to sit up nice and still, tall, make yourself comfortable. Maybe you want to just stand up, you know, shake your body around, do whatever you need to do to move and get loose, just shake out any stuck energy. And then just sit up nice and tall. And then close your eyes. Yeah, and just tap into that lovely breath. Perhaps drawing your square, if you enjoyed doing that, you notice how calm it made you feel as you're breathing in and lengthening. And you're breathing out and softening. Breathe in and lengthen. Breathe out. Good. Keep going. Inhaling. And exhaling. Eyes are soft. Notice your feet on the earth. Notice the ball mounds of your toes, your big toe ball mound pressing down, the center of your heel. Feel your inner arches of your feet lifting, your knees stacking over your ankles, your shoulders. They're rolling back and down and stacked over your hips. And the crown of your head, you feel yourself lengthening and lifting. And your whole face is soft. So you have no tension in your jaw. So often throughout the day in stressful situations, we can really clench our teeth. It creates tension in the jaw, which runs down the neck, all the way across the shoulders, down into the back. Just release your bottom jaw. Let that be soft. Let the skin on your face be soft. You are soft. You're so still. Yeah, and you're just noticing eyes are closed. The breath is coming in. You feel it moving you. You feel it lifting you up. You feel it supporting you but it'll only do these things when you let it. Now I'd like you to imagine that you are a piece of seagrass. So imagine you're rooted to the earth's surface, to the sandy seabed, but you are resisting the wave. The wave is like your breath. So the breath is coming in and imagine as a piece of seagrass, you're wincing slightly at the very thought, the very intrusion that the wave is trying to move you and push you with every single lap. It would start to break you. It would start to make you move awkwardly and you will get hurt if you keep resisting. You decide that it is in control and you're going to forge ahead no matter what your plans are. And when you do that, you break. But you are not that. You are a piece of seagrass that is wicked smart. You are so confident and so connected to your roots at the bottom of this beautiful sandy seabed. Your roots are spread far and wide and you are grounded. And from there, you are this beautiful piece of seagrass that moves effortlessly. You know the waves aren't here to get you. You know you're going to respond and move with the movement of the water with every breath you take. So you decide to respond with grace. You respond to the waves. You know that they are a good thing. You're just breathing gently. You're allowing the water to move you freely. You can feel it as the waves come in, you're moving gently to the left. As the waves go out, you're moving gently to the right. You notice how this taps into the breath, the rhythm of your breath, just like the sea, just like the ocean. The sound is even the same. Inhale, you feel yourself being lifted up. As you exhale, you feel yourself softening and settling back down. You know that without the waves, you would not be able to dance. So you move with them. So keep breathing, keep connecting to breath. Try this little experiment for the rest of the week, being curious about your breath. Follow your breath around your house, literally like it's the most fascinating guest you have ever invited in into your body the house of your body believe that what she is saying is the right thing is the truth because she is a rock star and you admire your breath so much because that really tells you that tells you about the health of your body 
that tells you what you need to do. And when you listen to your breath, all the answers are there. You will eat what she cooks for you. You will read what she recommends for you to read. You will move in the way she recommends you to move because you are listening and you will rest. When your breath lectures you, you are going to rest. You're going to be still. You will lie in Shavasana at the end of your yoga practice and you will soak up the comfort of the floor. Why? Because your breath is awesome. It is your greatest teacher. And for the rest of the week, you're going to listen to it as it moves through your body. Just so gently, so rhythmically, but coming from listening. Now, very, very gently feel a big breath lift you up like the wave coming to the shore. And then exhale, feel the shoulders soften, feel everything soften. You're so still. And then gently just open your eyes. Maybe you have already. And just be here, just really noticing how different you feel. The power of meditation is extraordinary. It's the equivalent, what I've just done is the equivalent to two hours sleep. So if you were really in it and you were focused on the breath and my words, you should feel a little bit more revived, ready for a beautiful lunch. Yeah. And if you're interested in learning more about meditation, about the movement of yoga, giving it a go, then, then that's what we do. You know, Blessed is set up to share the love of this incredible practice so that as individuals, we not only just exist, but we thrive. We thrive in our life, not only on our yoga mats, but off the mat. It's always possible to practice. It's always possible to meditate. We always say that the people that need the yoga the most and the meditation the most are always the people that say, I'm too busy for it. I don't have enough time. We have to make time. We have to prioritize us because if we don't look after us, it's actually impossible to look after anybody else in our life. So when you look after you, giving yourself that hour or whatever it is on your mat, you will see the most enormous benefit and how you can help other people in your life. You, you finish your yoga practice and you are glowing. You have a glow that you cannot help but share with everyone around you. You don't even need to say anything. They will just pick up on your beautiful energy. You will share that with those around you and they are the lucky ones because they get to benefit and you are giving that gift to them. So I cannot recommend it enough. On Sunday, we have a course starting, which is called Transform Now. Um, it's a 28 day program. We run it a lot. It's a fantastic, fantastic program where literally we hold your hand for 28 days. You will practice yoga six days a week. It doesn't have to be an energized class. It can be a slow class. We have classes at 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m., 7.30. We have them really late in the evening. We have them in the middle of the day. They're there for you to be as convenient to your busy schedule as possible. But we'll also have this incredible nutrition list, which will guide you with what you're eating, how you're eating and when you're eating. We literally hold your hand and we make you accountable so you can't miss a practice. And we meet on Sundays in the evening. We set your intentions for the week. We do a little practice together and then that's it. You're off. And after 28 days, guess what? You'll have this wonderful habit and this wonderful way of living and you'll feel better than you've ever felt in your life. And then you just carry it on. And that's just set you up and you can do it anywhere, wherever you are in the world. If you're on your holidays, you just zoom in and you just keep on flowing. So if you've never tried it, give it a go. It's the most amazing thing. I, I as you can tell, I'm quite passionate about it. It's brilliant. I know um, Simon Montgomery is, is one of the members of Movers and Shakers and, uh, and he does it. He attends. He's a fabulous chap if you've not met him. Um, but give it a go. If you like moving and shaking, then, um, then you've got to be loose. You can't, you can't be a mover and shaker if you've not got um, ease in your body and you've released this stagnation. We all have stuck energy in our body every single day. And it's the shifting of that stuck energy that is the practice of yoga. And you do the practice of yoga, the stuck energy is gone, and then you can go and do anything else that you love to do. And you'll do it even better than you did before. So thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you sharing your time with me today. I hope you've got your nuggets of information. Don't forget to get your stragulus. That's going to boost your immune system. Your power tonic recipe I'll send to you. Your cloves of garlic and sleep, glorious sleep, eight hours. And even if you never do a downward dog in your life, it doesn't matter. Just breathe deeply. Breathe in and breathe out and just enjoy the pause. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. Thank you so much, Nikki. That was marvellous. I feel quite chilled out. I'm cross-legged here on my chair. So um, 
I love all of that. Well, we'll send, like you said, all the information out to everybody who's participated today because there was a lot to take in. I think everybody was concentrating on their breath. I'm sure they didn't write notes down. I think, you know, I'm in a studio at home and my husband and son's been watching this in another room. So I'm sure they've already ordered everything on your list, though. I'm sure they literally have done that between them. Um, so we'll be on the tonic in a few days. But I absolutely loved it. And I know everyone will have done. So thanks from all of us. And as I said before, we'll circulate all the information. I know you do work for corporates. And I think, you know, now at this very point in time, everybody's going to benefit. And I think lots of people are going to be interested in what you do. So a huge thank you. Thank you to you. Uh, and just to mention to everybody watching today that the next Movers and Shakers event is on August the 4th. And it's one of our views from the top. So it's an interview with Ashad Bhatti, who is the founder and CEO of Apex Airspace talking about uh, new permitted rights development and building on existing buildings for helping the housing shortage. So that's gonna be fascinating, a lunchtime session next Tuesday, the 4th of August. So thank you again for watching today. I hope you've all enjoyed all of that. We'll circulate you information. Do take care and thank you from our family to yours. Have a good day.